Hello everyone. Welcome to yet another edition of the Storyblock Community Chats. And this time, I think, not I do not think, but actually it is the eighth episode. Uh, I still remember when we started, we came up with different topics and ideologies with respect to the community chats in general. But I'm super happy that we are already on the eighth edition. And this time with a very new topic, I would say. Of course, we have been talking about different general topics around community, uh, developer communities in general, programs out there about creating good CFP talks, turning your passion to profession, inclusive communities, and so much more. But this time, kind of a topic which not many people have talked about in the past and something which can be very crucial to understand the mindset of a developer and also to understand how this can be very effective. And I'm talking about developer education and creating programs. So I would love to touch upon this particular topic. And uh, for that, we have a very special guest joining us. Let me quickly invite Ali Mustafa on stage. Hello, Ali. How are you? Hello. Um, I'm doing good. How about you? All good. All good. I'm happy to host you. Uh, and uh, I was quite looking forward to this one because when I was thinking about this topic, I think you have been part of developer education programs by yourself for quite a long time now. You have a kind of paved path under this particular topic, you know, for many others in the community. So I think you would be the best person to talk about it. And even before jumping on that, let's hear from you. If you could just let our audience know more about who you are, what you do, and uh, what's something they can look forward to you. Absolutely. Um, so hello, everyone. My name is Ali Mustafa. And my typical way of saying hello is by waving a hand. So if you are in front of your computer, please wave hands. Um, so myself, Ali, and I work for Postman as you now as a senior developer advocate. Um, and I've been uh, kind of, you know, working with Postman for the last, almost last three years. Uh, before that, I used to kind of do a lot of, um, you know, courses, workshops, and used to kind of do a lot of work around community. Um, I'm a diploma graduate, and then I did my engineering. Um, so then as soon as I completed my diploma, I got a lot of technical knowledge, and I started applying it uh, in different domains. Um, I know AIML is so cool right now. Uh, I used to do it, uh, you know, from 2016, 2015, we used to do, like, amazing AIML workshops across India. Um, you know, Talking about my journey, I've traveled to uh, you know around 60 plus cities uh, across India, delivering more than 200 sessions. Um, you know, before pandemic, uh, in between pandemic, all virtual sessions and so on and so forth. Uh, so I'm quite familiar with uh, you know developers, education, um, and you know all of that, um, especially communities. Um, would love to definitely you know if you would like to chat with me, I would love to uh, kind of hear from you on any of the social media channels. I'm active almost everywhere. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about myself. Um, uh, I, you know, apart from all the work related stuff, I also do things for fun. Uh, yeah, that sounds odd, but I, I still do. <laughs> um, I, I watch Formula One um, a little bit when I get uh, a little free. And I, you know, to complement that, I do go-karting. Um, I'm a noob at it, but still I try to, you know, touch grass once in a while. No, I think that's fantastic. Everyone should, you know, take out time to, you know, do something which they love doing uh, that helps us keep our mental peace at place, <laughs> honestly, because Absolutely. I know sometimes it can be a lot when we are too much, you know, involved in our professional lives. It's really very important to take some time out, let's say on weekends or holidays to do something which we love doing as a hobby or as something out of passion. But yeah, thank you so yeah. much for raising yourself. I also kind of got to know more about you in this journey of yours when you were traveling across India in the nation and you were delivering so many great workshops, educating the developers here in the communities. So that's how I also got to know more about you. And uh, everyone who is listening to this particular uh, stream, I can't agree more on the fact that how much Ali have added impact. Impact is still a small word, I feel, when I say, because uh, the number of developers he has been able to educate throughout the country is just enormous. And uh, I am one of them, I can say, in some way or the other. So thank you so much, Ali, for joining in this particular live stream. Happy to have you. Yeah, thank you so much um, you know, for adding that. Um, absolutely my pleasure. Awesome. 
then well let's get started with the topic and uh, when when i mentioned you know the impact of devid and training programs uh, of course the first question which comes up in my mind is to understand why developer education is really important or you know why programs like training programs are where developers gets educated about let's say xyz topic why is it yeah. crucial in the current tech tech space i know you have been you know educating developers since quite a while now but why do you think it is really very important and how does it impact the industry as a whole absolutely um so if you see a life cycle of how new engineers come into market right um the whole thing starts from some you know, someone kind of taking at thinking about stem going and kind of learning about you know cs and then basically you know spending four years um and then becoming a developer right um and then once they become a developer uh, you know a lot of product companies you know come and be like hey use our product right um and you know and then basically uh, if more users uh, you know there are more users to your product obviously you would make more money uh, you would kind of you know solve a problem and uh, you know the life cycle kind of continues right um so basically this uh, you know like untouched or untapped audience which is uh, you know there who is just right now learning and they are dedicating all their time to learning right um like the whole point of developer education is to tap into you know these audiences early on so that when they are uh, kind of you know starting to work and they are able to work with the product really well uh, they are able to solve real world problem and not just about your product but about your industry i would say so more or less uh, if you see uh, you know a company comes and talks about apis right um okay so if they only talk about their product um that's very limited knowledge right um and not everyone would be interested to kind of hear about you know how their product works but if you talk about apis in general uh, people would be more inclined towards like okay i want to learn about apis apis are amazing um same you know the whole industry will get shaped meaning that uh, you know all this untapped developer which we are kind of targeting right now they are learning about apis they will go to companies and then they will talk about uh, you know how apis are important and so on and so forth right um so it doesn't necessarily you know revolves around your product but then uh, you know educating developers actually kind of shapes the whole industry itself Uh, because now there are a lot of folks who are talking about you know uh, this particular tech which you are uh, your your product is com- you know like very excited about um to add another example you'll see a lot of uh, you know people kind of talking about serverless cloud um you know and in that domain you'll see a lot of companies there which are like big players small players but then if you don't know about cloud you know you wouldn't care any less about any other company offering a cloud you know platform um so yeah that's why developer education is like very crucial at its core uh, that you're not just uh, you know shaping someone's uh, you know knowledge about your product but you're actually shaping the whole industry in that direction yeah that that make a lot of sense and do you think it also resonates a lot with the fact of awareing the developers right from very beginning yeah um so it uh, it also kind of adds to uh, you know if you kind of look at from uh, uh, like a you know developer perspective um i would be happy to kind of know the trends uh, you know as i'm going and you know venturing into uh, you know my world uh, i would be uh, you know more than happy to kind of learn about the recent trends and if someone is kind of willing to take that effort to teach me uh, you know uh, you know in a course format in a video format um in you know written documentation format i would be more than happy to kind of consume it um and be like okay you know this is something uh, which i would uh, love to have and you know i i would be looking forward to so yes yeah and i believe when you mentioned about you know different uh kind of distribution materials for example or yeah. the way of distributions like video documentation uh that that's where my next question comes in because many times there are like the developer education is just the chronology here you know there are yeah. ways with which developers can be educated so what do you think uh is or how how would i say that because let's say let's talk about the key components in general in your opinion what are the key components of a successful developer education you know maybe some factors that really needs to be taken care of while we are crafting any developer education programs out there absolutely uh, so the first point is to kind of narrow down on what you are willing what you want to teach right 
are very essential. I see a lot of folks who will just go out there and be like, okay, I am going to teach full stack development, right? Um, yes, you know, let's go ahead and teach it. But then um, what is your target audience? What is it that you want uh, to kind of enable developers to do? Uh, if you want, if you're targeting, you know, something like a very broad topic, um, you know, there are uh, consequences to it. For example, a full stack development, it is going to be a very lengthy course. You will most probably not cover all parts of, uh, you know, people will not be kind of, you know, so excited to kind of go through all parts of it, you know, 40 hours of video, 60 hours of video and so on and so forth, right? Um, so the first part is to kind of decide on a niche, uh, which you feel is, you know, uh, like it is an intersection of what you are doing in your product and what is an industry standard, right? Um, if you find that niche, uh, you know, you'll find that sweet spot. Um, that is where you start uh, and you'll you'll be like, okay, uh, this is what I'm going to teach, right? Um, in our case, let's say, you know, I'm, I'm more inclined towards, you know, sharing about APS. Uh, so if I go ahead and I talk about, you know, APS security, um, it's possible that I might have an audience there, but not majority of them, uh, you know, are directly jumping to security. But a lot of them are jumping to how to, uh, you know, how APS work, like very simple. Um, you know, there are tons of videos about it as well. But then what are we going to do differently, right? So here we start designing the components. We choose uh, choose a niche and then we're like, okay, what kind of material do we want to develop? Do we want to let, let's do small 10, you know, short form videos, right? Uh, 30 second each, you know, three minute content, you know, let's let's do that. Or else I want to do long form content. So I'm going to go ahead, create a video course, right? Um, I'll kind of see the views as a matrix. I'll see, uh, you know, the plays as a matrix. Or else I'll go ahead and create, you know, work with the CMS and directly put it across the course, ask people to register, you know, complete the course, get a certificate. So in that case, I can map through the whole journey of the user, right? Um, and then, you know, obviously, um, whenever you're designing content, it, it uh, kind of, you know, also kind of brings you back to what your goal is. Uh, so if your goal is to just make something quick, uh, you know, and, you know, keep adding more information, uh, then in that case, um, you, you're targeting a completely different matrix. But if your goal is to have the user engage and basically, you know, tap into, let's say, if the user did not discover my course, and directly went ahead and did X. It also, uh, so I was giving an example of how you track it, right? How you, uh, you know, if, if your goal is that by my teaching, if the developer is able to work, uh, you know, on a particular technology in a more better way, uh, then that becomes like a viable product, which you can take it to your leadership and say that, hey, we want to do this because, uh, you know, by doing this, uh, the developer is more proactive, we reduce hours, we add value, and so on, create an ROI, you know, for your company, for um, the user and everyone else, right? Um, so that's the point um, of, you know, designing like a complete, uh, you know, end-to-end -end ecosystem where not just kind of, you know, going ahead and pumping content. Um, so content creation is very different than, you know, mapping an education system. Content creation is more like, you know, you go ahead, pick a niche, you know, create a content and you, you know, worry little about likes, you worry little about, you know, what kind of, uh, you know, like impact it is going to have, but you are just pumping it down and you're like, okay, I'm going to go talk about, you know, what is ABC, explain it, that's about it, right? And if people love it, people love it. If not, it's a hit and a miss. So that's absolutely fine. Um, so that's very different than designing education programs because now you're, you're not just worried about that one shot, but you're looking very long term. So that's why you will see that, you know, a lot of companies, have invested 10, 12 years to develop their education program, which are now like very much popular. People love it. People give examples of it because, you know, they have invested so much time to kind of shape it and they're not just creating content, but they are actually creating, you know, um, like proper education programs. Yeah, that that so much makes sense because it's, it's not the game of one night, you know, or one day. Yeah. Uh, when a developer education becomes successful and i think you mentioned a lot of times uh in this in this uh previous section of yours that the numbers the number of signups the turnout the developer journey in general is something that really matters a lot it's not just about hit and miss it's about how it eventually gets successful and yeah. which also brings me to another point uh about measuring the impact 
so yes why yes. all of this is happening while we are curating this program in general while we are understanding the developers needs and accordingly you know paving the path how do you measure the success and impact of developer education because not every time it would be possible for us to you know have everything in our control so what are those key metrics that we sh- definitely should you know keep a track of let's say as a company uh, as yeah. a as an organization absolutely so it is absolutely necessary to justify your spendings um you know it uh, obviously you know when we say that i am going to go ahead and let's say create a developer program um it is very important to justify it um to your leadership to everyone else like even to yourself when you are let's say you know you are going and investing and doing that it's very important that what is your goal um you know and quantifying it again you know not everything is quantifiable but then as much as you quantify you will get you know more proof you will get more uh, you know confidence to say that this program works right um just to give you two examples one let's say i you know i am uh, you know an individual and i go ahead i invest 1 lakh uh, you know inr or somewhere around let's say you know 1500 dollars and i am uh, kind of you know going and creating some content around education right um as a person i would be like okay you know it's my money let's go ahead smoke it um but you know if i if i do that works like you know i can go ahead create 10 videos hire editors you know um and the fed research done and kind of do all of that and will work for let's say 3 months 6 months but again can i pump that amount of money every 3 months no without justifying it to myself and saying that hey ali you know why are you doing this right the same happens with companies when they start education program uh, you know initially company will be like okay go ahead 100000 plus thing um but they'll give you you know for a year and you know that's fine but then after a year your job is also at a risk not just you know the money you are getting obviously it will start from cutting budgets to you know getting your budget and yourself um very important to justify all of this and mm-hmm. that's why uh, we start by you know quantifying each items and understanding what my goal is right um so if um, you know to kind of you know retrade on that individual example like if i'm an individual i'd be like okay i'm getting more reach um, you know i am able to get advertisers i'm becoming an influencer so i am making let's say you know half that money via sponsored post right so now uh, the economics to me is if i pump in this amount of money every 3 months i am able to 2x my business 3x my business i am able to make more money and uh, you know at the end of the day i'm able to uh, kind of you know create like a whole small ecosystem for me and my team like my editors and all of them right um works like a charm so here you can see that we quantified stuff and then we justified it via money as an roi right um necessarily doesn't happen in that case you know a from a company perspective and obviously uh, in this small you know ecosystem Uh, we are not changing industries but we are just creating content we are creating education um, and we might be you know impacting a lot of students obviously uh, you know a lot of developers in that process definitely but that is not our goal our goal is to get more advertisers so that our revenue keeps coming and then we keep kind of pumping money and doubling it down right um now when you kind of you know take a step back and look at it from a company perspective company would be like okay i don't want to make money from it you know education is a key part of our vision and it is also something um, which you know the industry i'm part of um, you know i as as a company it's my responsibility to educate you know people or developer in that particular industry so from a company perspective when they kind of set goals initially they'll be like okay go ahead research right um, and then you know come back and tell us what people think right so you go ahead launch you know uh, some blogs launch some videos you know spend on production and then you come back and be like okay there are you know 100 people watching our videos um you know there are 100 commands there are uh, you know 1000 sign ups um you know there are people from these countries these demographics um and from that we are confident that you know they are uh, you know educated to xyz levels right um, and then the company will be like okay this sounds promising let's go ahead and double down on their efforts right um and then you know create like more uh, have bigger team target individual regions and you know expand uh, in the true sense right um so to kind of sum it up uh, it is important to quantify stuff it's important to directly related to the industry standards 
So what is it that you will consider a success matrix in your particular industry? I, in my case, I'll tell you if I'm going ahead and if someone is learning about APIs, and that's a success for me, right? But if they are completing my certification, uh, that's super success for me, right? Um, I can be like, okay, one person kind of came in, uh, completed the whole course, got certified, you know, plus one. Now they share it on social, you know, plus one. Now they invite their friends, have referrals, plus one, right? Um, their friends invite their friends, right? So you see, the end goal is to create a loop, right? Um, and if I'm able to create a successful loop, uh, then, you know, I'll, I'll call this like, you know, a super successful program. Um, or else if I have to, you know, bring a swag every time I want someone to do a course, um, not gonna work, right? Because you're not going to have money to spend and, you know, bring swag every single time and incentivize it you know, in monetary ways, right? If you're getting someone into your system for, let's say, a dollar, uh, that should be free because you're already spending on the course, you're already spending on the employees, you're already kind of doing a lot of, you know, uh, like planning and deploying cash uh, in a segment which is not guaranteed to, uh, you know, to your company to kind of, you know, generate revenue or generate income. Uh, it might happen in the future, but right now your company is not getting anything out of it. Um, so it is very important to quantify all of this and kind of, you know, uh, create a justification uh, so that, you know, your company keeps investing in these programs. Yeah, I think that's a well put it thought. Uh, and uh, I agree with the fact because when it when it comes to proving the resources that you have been using uh, in exchange yeah, to yeah. the, uh, you know, finances put it in. I think that's that's very crucial and uh, it needs to be taken care of right, right from the beginning. It shouldn't like always be like, you know, you start experimenting and forget about the turnout at the same time. But yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think this also answers the question from talking in the chat. He did ask about, would love to know more about how companies look at their at programs. But yeah. Um, on that note, like this has been more about developer education in general, right? Uh, how yeah, do we yeah. define it? What metrics to consider? What are the key components? Uh, and all of these things. Now, one thing which you mentioned is that it's it's a long process, you know? Companies do take a lot of years to build that program, yeah, yeah. you know, build that education base for their developers or for their communities. Uh, in this period, I'm sure that there might be evolutions, you know, updates in technologies in the way uh, developers might, you know, love to learn something new or advancements in different approaches. How do you tackle that situation? Because uh, in such a rap rapidly evolving tech environment nowadays, uh, all these developer education programs, they just, how how do you, what, what approach do you have to adapt to it uh, and just, you know, continue building on top of what you're doing? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I guess the key here is, uh, you know, what, um, so we talk about like long term goals, right? So if you see, you know, a company who has invested in education for over 10 years, uh, they have created content 10 years back, most probably, right? And you're like, okay, you know, if you are going right now and you don't date them, definitely the developers will be like, okay, this is outdated. We don't want to be part of this, you know, uh, developer education community because it's outdated in nature. Um, it, you know, working uh, at the core of, you know, developing education programs, I, I can, uh, uh, you know, tell you very confidently that um, you have to, you know, make a plan to not just create new content and create new education programs, but also maintain the existing ones. That's why it's very important to, you know, not just create and leave something. Um, if you are doing that, you're not an education program, you are a content creator. So you are just creating content and, you know, you're just keeping it there and yeah, that's about it. You know, people will come look at it, you know, they'll be happy about it or, you know, they'll see, okay, it's outdated, they'll just leave it. But if you are actively developing an education program, it's very essential for you to kind of go ahead. And when the industry evolves, uh, you evolve with the industry, your program evolves. Right? So if today, uh, chat GPT is there, right? So, you know, if you're, if you are going to create an education program, um, why not, you know, instead of competing, why not leverage it and be like, okay, um, you know, uh, let's say my FAQ will be now powered by AI and I'm going to go ahead, use ChatGPT or any other similar models which are open source, uh, you know, uh, and work with LMMs and kind of incorporate that. 
um, into my own education program so that people you know don't feel left out um, and definitely you know when you are targeting uh, you know a broader aspect of things um, you know it's very difficult to keep track so if you are going ahead and you're like okay i'm going to develop you know we, the example we should took earlier was of uh, full stack tools i'll be like okay you know uh, now people are adopting go people earlier you know were not that uh, you know like you would never see go as a part of full stack developer courses a lot a lot of times right it would be more like after you have learned it from you know just have you go ahead and then you explore go or other languages but now you'll see that a lot of developers are like hey learn full stack development with go right as a back end um, you know go ahead let's learn about a new database uh, let's you know go about uh, go and uh, you know talk about um, all new format of you know cloud services um so if you are uh, targeting like a very broad uh, you know spectrum then there are a lot of uh, new uh, you know front ends there are a lot of new back ends there are a lot of new databases now you have to update three things um and not just that you have to also be uh, you know like you have to also update uh, not just that like the written content but every source of the content which exists right so to maintain obviously you know a unique community you are you are also kind of going to update the blogs write new blogs uh, to complement that you know bring in a new folks and kind of do all of that um so you know um if you are targeting a broader aspect then it becomes very difficult to have to have a, a large team and justify having that and then kind of you know keep adding stuff and uh, you know keep updating it um, that's your duty Uh, but when you are focusing on a small niche um the tutos you have to take is are very small um yeah like to give you an example ai is booming right now if you are into let's say you know um a back end development you know industry and you're like okay now we are going to go ahead and develop like you know a simple you know payment gate um you kind of create content around that you're all good it was working fine um and then the ai buzz came in right and you're feeling left out that my content is about you know back end and ai is taking all the limelight don't worry take ai out of it and add fraud detection inside your course and now people are like okay ai is here also so i get to learn new uh, you develop your program one step further and then you're like okay uh, you know you keep adapting to the industry standards that keeps your learners engaged uh, you foster a community which is updated uh, you know on the industry trends and not just like you know like 20 year back curriculum but uh, then there's no difference between you and college colleges right uh, because this is acting like a college right whatever curriculum was said by someone i am going to just you know take it up and teach that and then move forward right um so it's very essential to kind of keep a track of that update it um, and you know uh, kind of form your goals around it also it is important from a long term perspective to you know kind of show that to your leadership that hey the program which we are working on you know it is going to take 3 years to at least see some impact or 2 years to at least see some impact right mm-hmm. because a lot of times what will happen is you'll go ahead uh, you will you know be very confident about i'll create some impact in one year um you know you kind of take the funding you you know have every, the team set up everything is working but then after one year you're not able to justify the numbers and you realize that okay it takes time you know to get in all the required metrics which you promised um you know uh, companies will cut down you know on that companies will be like okay this is extra cost so let you know marketing do it will let you know our uh, documentation team handle some parts of it we don't need a dedicated you know a developer education program for that so yeah. it's very essential to communicate that length also true true yeah i think and also uh, while all of this is happening it's it's also really very important to understand what our developers need you know having that uh, feedback loop always open and flexible for them to you know reach out to you and let let you know you know what are their requirements or maybe you having that liberty to reach out to your developer communities run a survey asking them right question and yeah. understanding where they are coming from i think that also helps like what what's the need of an r and accordingly Absolutely. you know uh, finding finding the way out but yeah uh, thank you so much yeah. for adding all of those things i think we talked about process evaluation evolution uh, one little yeah. thing i wanted to touch base on was about the approach now developer education can be of different kinds and uh, for me right from very beginning i really loved on you know the practical approach of learning new things of getting educated so how important is hands on or practical learning 
is in the developer education space or what what are what are those approaches that you found personally to be most effective when educating developers the right way absolutely so i say this right now uh, like you know if you ask me the same question like when i was in 2017 and developing stuff i would be like hey don't develop on twitter no one watches it okay don't uh, you know go about posting you know instagram uh, stories or instagram post or you know like do all of that i'd be like okay develop you know hands on courses and go to colleges and deliver it set up a classes you know set up a space where people can come and you know do all of that right um now that that is you know so i've seen both sides of the coin when uh, the digital platforms did not you know uh, like have that much of active users to you know like right now where everyone is online and everyone is like you know on twitter or you know on instagram or on different social uh, media platforms right um so as you are uh, kind of you know going ahead and uh, you know you are um, you know talking about how should i um, you know go ahead and develop a brand which targets um, hands on and hands off both because in today's world both are important right um so let's say my strategy personally is that i'm not going to leave them at any platform right so my idea would be okay i'm going to go ahead and create a hands on course um i'm going to uh, you know have uh, that knowledge imparted to them uh, via hands on uh, you know as much as possible but then i'm not going to leave all the other platforms just because they are hands on um so my whole target is to drive them to hands on and to drive them to hands on how we will use all these platforms to create content which then you know prompts them to action um so it's very essential so if you see uh, the online completion rate of courses um it's very less it's uh, you know somewhere around 20% or less than that even internationally it's it's like very less in compared uh, you know to people enrolling to a course and then completing the course right now a few reasons for that is obviously you know people don't like to just sit here and watch an hour long video when they can watch you know 20 reels in that period of time um so people love uh, people don't have that much of attention span right now where they are going to sit and you know watch your keynote for you know two hours on a screen they are not going to do that they are going to probably scroll in their mobile phone after 10 minutes or 15 minutes and they are distracted there um so it's essential that when you are developing uh, you know a developer uh, program education plan the whole point of that is um obviously it is uh, like there's no question of hands on that is the most uh, or the most essential part of your education program because without that you cannot justify a lot of things right um as soon as you go hands on you define product you define uh, you know the time taken on that product you define a lot of matrices which companies value a lot right which um, you know where the companies are interested that okay how much time this user is spending on my product because of your course um you know how much active this particular user is uh you know before taking your course after taking your course right and all of that imparts a lot of matrix for the company themselves so they would definitely want you to be hands on um and obviously a hands on approach also imparts uh, you know a lot of knowledge into individual developers where they are not just like reading through documentation forever or going through you know just reading tutorials and being like okay you know this is how you make logs or this is how you do sign up but um can you kind of integrate you know create an app which can do login sign up forget password all of that uh, as a you know small project for to us instead of just teaching them how to do login and how to do sign uh, but not to forget doing that is also important because if there's an experienced developer and who can and like why are you teaching me this course i just need a code to go ahead and create a sign up page just give me that code you know i don't want you to kind of you know involve me in this life cycle and give me all that other things i just want that thing so both are important you can see that you know in, in the second case where the developer is experienced and they are coming back to your documentation they are able to kind of read something and it's completely hands off in nature but they kind of you know get the vibe of it they go back and they are implementing stuff and you know they get an idea so it's very important to cater to all kinds of audiences and today in today's world obviously it's very important to have strategies uh, to funnel them down into your uh, you know like hands on course yeah. because uh, you know if you are not able to do that you are not able to funnel them then uh, that's very difficult for you to justify because you cannot justify you know post views 
or you know likes and so on yeah. you need to kind of justify you know more concrete evidence yeah true and i believe like of course hands on uh, content or hands on learning is one aspect and hands off is at the same time really very important which you mentioned uh yeah one thing which i believe is that if it works for them it works out you know <laughs> it's like yeah if i am if i'm a developer i would just go ahead and look for what i am looking and in today's world there's just so much content out there uh but yeah the real education is somewhere which i as a developer will definitely filter out for myself uh that is that is you know you. my choice uh, as a developer that what works for me uh but yeah, yeah. Uh, one point which can be added here is to read or to read not redistribute but distribute your content the right way you know for example let's say yeah. currently we are hosting a live stream this will be recorded and uploaded as a video after editing uh, we can create shorts out of it we can create a recap blog out of it you know we can write a twitter thread for this so there are just so many ways to redistribute your single content and i think that allows every kind of developer to just get the gist of what this content was all about and get educated uh, ultimately uh, this again brings me to my another question which is very important but many a times we kind of i would not say not focus but miss out on it's it's about it's the point of accessibility right uh, in today's yeah. world inclusivity diversity is something really very important and uh, when it comes to developer education what are your ways that you keep in mind to promote inclusivity and diversity in any developer education program which ultimately ensures you know that the opportunities which we provide are accessible to a wide range of individuals just like you mentioned that an experienced developer might be looking for something else and uh, someone who is just getting started will have a total different mindset so what what factors to consider to make your program accessible for everyone absolutely i guess uh, you know accessibility is like it it should be core part of everything which you do uh, definitely because you know now um, this is the time where we are living uh, you know where uh, like there are more awareness right so it's not um, like earlier there were very less awareness that okay why would someone uh, you know who's um, like would kind of go go ahead and use a computer or use a mobile phone and you know do all of that and you know we would just focus on that you know 80% audience where we say that okay this is where we are going to focus and we are just going to leave 20% out of the picture because uh, you know uh, we would not even think about them right but um, in today's world definitely that is a point which you will see uh, you know again and again at uh, you know a lot of places even conferences which uh, talk about accessibility and enabling more folks um, you know and a diverse group to kind of do that and uh, you know if you kind of see we discussed a point earlier that when you're measuring you know metrics obviously it is important that you focus on these metrics as well um and that is like uh, you know like the start of everything because when you're defining the program um you find the metrics and you're like okay how diverse is my program um how accessible is my program um and all the metrics which are generating will actually give you the answer that if you have you know all the programs targeted towards one specific region or one part of or one community of that particular region you might not be getting an unbiased review you will be like okay you know everyone loves my product uh, you know in india let's go ahead and launch it in us uh, no it doesn't work like that um so it's very essential that uh, you know like we kind of do all of that and the first way of doing it is to acknowledge it um and then the second uh, point which which you will kind of do actually as an action item is to uh, evaluate what content you are uh, you know kind of pumping so let's say um, you are a developer education program you go ahead and you create a course um now you go ahead um, and you create videos but is your videos transcribed okay for people who cannot hear um can they read it okay if they can read it is it accurate or are you using an ai bot which is kind of generates your uh, you know transcript and it just you know add gibberish in between right um okay so all of this uh, you know starts from what content you are you know starting to kind of develop so if you are posting an image on social media and you are driving them uh, you know is uh, does it have and all text on it, right 
uh, if you are, are designing websites, um, you know, your course is on a website, it's a reader website, but then um, can you, uh, you know, go ahead and make it, uh, you know, uh, like make it in, in a way where uh, the browsers can read it and make it more accessible for users, right? Um, so a lot of times it will happen that, you know, uh, I have, I've seen this personally happen to all, uh, in a lot of developer education programs is that they would create all of that and then they, what they would do is they would not use the right tags um, and they would just kind of paste uh, the image of the text on the website, right? So now when, uh, you know, your accessible tool is kind of starting to read, it starts to read the first line and then there's an image. Now it cannot read the image, so it will skip it and directly at the end, right? And um, so visually it looks good, you know, looks perfect. But then, uh, you know, it, it is very essential that you test these things out, um, you know, and uh, you, you are, uh, you know, targeting and you are also taking feedback. So what I've seen, you know, a lot of folks do is they think, you know, they know what accessibility means um, because, you know, they are not, you know, in that category. They're like, okay, I have everything. So I can think for them, I can, you know, imagine what problems they might face uh, but it's not uh, you know that easy to you know envision something which you have never done right yeah um if you have uh, if you have never walked uh, you know without your uh, you know without, without saying obviously you will be like um how how you know how would you imagine the problems the person is facing you'll you'll never imagine that uh, you can just think about it that, okay, they might be you know, imagining these problems and you know, thinking about it, I can implement it in my product. Yeah. No, um, it's essential that you go to a person, you involve them, you talk with them, you understand what problems they are facing, and then you incorporate that into your product, yeah. right? Um, a very good example I'll give you is of sign language. A lot of folks develop a lot of AI projects and say that, okay, we are developing a sign language project. It can detect you know, sign language. Okay, looks good. Um, you ask them questions, okay, which sign language can it detect? They're like, what do you mean with sign language? And there's only one, no. So there are tens, even in India, we have, we don't have one. We have, you know, a, diff, a lot of, uh, you know, different sign languages which are adopted. Um, you know, across the US, there's a standard, but, you know, across India, there's, uh, you know, a, a lot of different versions of it. Um, same, you go to a different country, uh, you know, you'll find different versions of it. Hmm. So um, the more you talk, the more you talk to your target audience, if you want to make your program truly accessible, uh, this is the way. Uh, you go ahead, you talk to them, you implement that feedback. And in today's world, you know, no one can go and tell that, hey, I don't have the technology to do it. Um, you know, that's that's an excuse, I would say, that you don't have a technology to do it. Uh, yeah, if, you, if you're not targeting accessibility, that's a different point altogether, right? As I told you, like a lot of developer programs, you know, they don't have the budget to do that. Okay. But even then, you know, there's no point in kind of, you know, taking an image which is which has text written on it and directly pasting it in your course because you are by default making accessibility like, you know, you are just taking a U-turn on that, yeah. even though you don't have the budget to do it. Yeah. And in a lot of times, you don't need a lot of budget to do it. So, yeah. True. Yeah, it's, it's always about the will and the approach. Not many times it's required for, uh, you know, you to have the budget. I think it's also about how you cater yeah. it, how you plan it well and uh, your how how well you understand your developers communities which which you are delivering Absolutely. education to uh, yeah well well said i think uh moving moving ahead you know it's it's kind of very important not just for the developer educators or programs like these but also developers to put their point ahead you know what are what are the requirements so that 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 bridge between the organization and the developers that can be uh, formed and it's and it ultimately helps each other to understand okay what's lacking and absolutely I have seen many such instances where this has been considered of course one thing which you mentioned about the you know the script which comes in let's say for the videos uh, where where people yeah. who cannot uh, hear can read it out you know when and especially the sign languages that's so true. Uh, I've seen some some of the conferences uh, doing that more recently, and uh, I think I think that's a great start for for considering the accessibility and keeping that in mind. So yeah, for anyone watching, if you have any ideas, feel free to tag us and share more about it. And would love to know your thoughts on this. And 
last question that i would like to cover i see we are almost on time but this is this is this can be something important we talked about multiple factors but it's it's a long journey you know it's not as i as like we both mentioned it's not about let's say one day one week month or a year it's a, it's a long process and i'm sure there there comes a lot of challenges uh you know a lot of uh, setbacks a lot of failures a lot of experimentation which we go through so what are those general challenges which an organization might encounter or a com- or commonly face while implementing all of these programs in place and uh, how can these challenges be addressed is it yeah is it very is it not good to have those challenges because from what i understand it's important to understand what not to do you know uh, yeah. but, but what are your thoughts on this absolutely uh, so as you can see that you know this is when you talk about developer education it is not uh, you know like an hours job or like you know even a years job in in most of the cases uh, it's a long journey and if you set the foundation wrong um, then you know it is uh, it is like you know you are setting the you know the bottom stage of the rocket uh, you know launcher like wrong and you are you know designing the satellite really well but then once it takes off you know it just bursts into flame right because uh, the core of your rocket is not ready it's not uh, you know uh, in shape and that's why it's very important to do all these mistakes when you are at the foundation level right um it's good to not just you know do your best and directly put it and launch it instead work on the engine you know make it make it reliable test it 10 times and then take off right so what i see uh, in today's world is that uh, you know startup will come raise a million dollars in funding go ahead hire you know uh, 10 people put them in developer education program tell them hey deliver us in you know one year we need x number of devs we need this we need that um, and then you know in that hurry um, the foundation is set wrong right and um, so what they would do is they would go ahead they would you know try the easy to uh, you know go ways uh, they'll hire influencers they'll you know kind of do all sort of thing to kind of get that eyeball but then as soon as the ship takes off uh, you know it will burst into flames you will not have you will not see any real impact and then uh, the company will be like we don't need developer education programs because you know anyway we invested so much money we hired influencers you know do all of that and what is the result we are uh, you know no so to give you an idea let's say you know uh, when we started our discord server um it was new you know things are happening everything you know was going on and then suddenly uh, you know i went ahead to a settings in member zone and i pruned the server and um, now for those who do not know discord um you know that's a setting which you should not touch right um but you know we were developing it we were new to it we went ahead we pruned it uh, in a moment's time you know thousands of members reached right no way to recover it no way to you know go ahead and uh, you know be like if we put in like so many months to you know get to that x number um and it's down by not hundreds but thousands right um so again you know good that we did that mistake right now because imagine a server with 100000 users and then doing uh, you know that function now that's a big mistake you cannot do it but now that we know that this could happen we have set up you know guidelines around that is the red zone who is allowed to go into that red zone right um you know what are the protocols when you are kind of doing that okay and all of that um so again important to do mistakes early on and set your team and obviously it is also uh, very important uh, to have a team which um, is focused on uh, you know which is uh, like expert in each you know section of things um in our case it it would be very essential or very good if we go ahead and hire a discord uh, you know expert who could tell us about all these things at once and then we would be happy to kind of you know go ahead set up a server everything works fine um but then we learned it yes we learned it we learned it the hard way if we hired someone who could do it and tell us um much better right uh, so it is uh, you know again a skill issue uh, it is again you know um, uh, a point where you have to do mistakes to learn new things so if i never committed that mistake i would have never known that now if you know companies come to me and ask me hey we are creating a discord server what are your recommendations suggestions and cautions 
you know what I tell them, right? That hey, stay away from. But uh, you don't know what it does, but definitely it does something which you will not be pleased to know after you know. Yes. <laughs> you, um, you see that button? Do not press it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I get a meme on my, he like back end, but I'm not able to explain it. But yeah, um, you know, <laughs> a very good Indian movie. Uh, so, very essential to make mistakes early on, uh, because in long term, creating these mistakes is going to cost you money, a lot of money, a lot of time. So imagine, forget about the money, right? Uh, you know, imagine. Um, then the members, how much time it will take me to build that server again, if it yeah. was a hundred K server. If it is small, now I'm building it. I'm okay with it. My company is okay with it. They're like, okay, you know, let's go ahead, build it out. You know, we did not lose that many members. We, we were fine with it, right? Um, yeah. And again, like understanding that and having that, uh, you know, attitude that, okay, uh, I'm going to do all the major aspects of things beforehand. I'll try out all of the things beforehand. Mm -hmm. uh, so the example I give you of the rocket, it's essential that you you know try out the you know booster a lot of times, and then you invest two x three x in kind of you know marketing it and you know developing a larger team, replicating that programs in multiple aspects and doing all of that. And that's why running beta programs is very important mm -hmm. to kind of understand what challenges you'll have to kind of try it out with a small set of groups. Uh, you know, and then kind of expand it slowly, uh, launch it for the general public, you know, have a continuous loop of feedback of what they're telling you to improve in your program, how it can become better, um, what content they like, what they dislike, you know, and all of that. Um, and that becomes uh, like the core of your program. And once the core is made, um, it is like, you know, very, uh, I, I'll say it is, uh, it is very rare that after 10 years, you realize that, you know, the core is set wrong. Uh, because, you know, if your core is set wrong, your program is not run for 10 years, right? <laughs> it will run for a year or two. But if your core is strong, uh, then there's very little mistakes you can make while, you know, like going ahead and marketing your program, right? So there are two aspects of it. The first aspect, uh, aspect is to develop the program, develop metrics, measure it, justify the program. And now that you have done all of that, uh, you have a case to present to your company leadership. They have, uh, you know, time to review it and then um, they give you the budget to kind of go ahead and just expand it everywhere. And now you adopt new, uh, you know, methodologies, you work with different groups and you expand your program. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I remember we were having this chat once and you did mention about the Discord thing which happened. Uh, and yeah. th that was definitely my learning as well. And I would like to share here that... Uh, documenting your failures or documenting the mistakes is also important and at the same time sharing Absolutely. it with people around you who are kind of in the same domain also helps not only to improve your program of uh, educating developers but also other people's trying out so i think that was a learning for me as well who did not you know even thought of in that direction uh but yeah, yeah. i think those are the challenges and i believe the mistakes we learn and uh, it's, it's always a fresh beginning. You know, it's always a good, good thing to start again instead of just thinking what went wrong. But yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, with that, we are almost in the end of this particular community, ch community chats. Uh, thank you so much, Ali, for sharing all of these insights. I'm definitely gonna, you know, go back and take a look on all these insights which you have shared. And I'm sure all our audience members who might who are watching right now who might watch it later they find it interesting as well so in case you do feel free to tag us online and share that with us uh, about your thoughts your feedbacks or anything that you would like to share with us and also if you feel like this can add value to someone else's journey please do share it with them as well uh before we actually end this ali do you have any closing remarks for this particular topic um well i would say this as so i'll i'll give closing remarks about developers and you know companies who are building developer programs so one is that if you are a develop if you are a company who, who are focusing on developer education um the very first thing you need to do is uh, kind of you know set up a team and let that team you know um kind of take time and kind of work on the core of the program and uh, kind of enable that you know uh, like if you want to see impact give them time uh, give them resources and you will see the results definitely uh, you know in the longer term 
uh, it will definitely help not just your product but the overall industry itself right because no one is you know industry has not spent money you know to kind of educate developers you are the ones who are part of that industry who is going to spend that uh, to kind of you know create next gen of developers and for developers um, you know it's essential that you participate in these programs and provide your honest feedback right you know uh, definitely we know you come for swags but with swags uh, come with you know really good uh, feedback which can improve these programs for a lot of other folks who are new to this uh, you know industry um, and definitely you play a very important role more important role than producers because um, without you the loop is very empty and uh, you know it's more like you know they are just generating content which uh, is no which no one is consuming but uh, you know with your feedback it, it sets in the right direction as much as a responsibility is of the company to kind of you know create a right uh, developer program um, it is a similar responsibility of consumers to kind of point that company in that direction uh, and say that okay we are loving this we are not loving this or you know how you're going to shape this so yeah that's about it from my side Awesome. Thank you so much, Ali, for sharing that. And uh, would, lo would love to catch up on this topic and, uh, you know, hear more of your feedbacks uh, once in a while. Of course, we hope to meet you soon in person and let's chat more about it. But thank you so much for coming and taking out this time and sharing all of these wonderful topics and interests and your perspective, most importantly, with uh, our audience and with the developers who might watch this particular recording later. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for the invitation. Love that conversation. Awesome. Cool. Well, everyone, this was about Storyblock Community Chat 8, the impact of David and training programs. I believe there were a lot of points that we touched upon, you know, right from understanding importance of David at first place, the key components that we should consider, how to measure impact the right way, all how, how to you know uh, adapt to the changes of uh, technology hands-on learning inclusivity accessibility and so many more other things you know including the challenges out there uh, i'm sure that must be something that you take away home from this uh, in case we missed out on something please please let us know you can always tag us online you can let us know what interesting topics that you would like to hear from us on that note i have some things to talk about the upcoming live stream because i know we are doing this on a weekly basis and we still have so much more in our bag so having said that we have code and chill which is a different show that we run this is community chat code and chill is all about live coding and a lot more interesting aspects about different frameworks story block and their integration so we are going to do about react and story block and this is happening next week which is monday 4th of december same time 9 30 pm ist and 6 p.m. CEST. So feel free to register using this QR code. After that, we have the next edition of Community Chats coming up uh, on 15th of December, and that is about rising from the burnout. I'm sure both of these topics are going to be super interesting, and more interesting is going to be the conversations around it. Uh, with that being said, I think I have done my part of hosting it. I'll also share a quick link of uh, story block events so all the upcoming events that you want to know about this is your place to head over to so feel free to check that out and uh, make sure you follow us on twitch so that you get notified whenever we go live and uh, thank you so much for joining in i'll take uh, time to say bye and i hope to see you in upcoming live streams super soon take care and have a great rest of your day and weekend more importantly bye bye